Well, we made it, you guys. It's our final episode of 2020, and good riddance to this year, and here's the hoping next year's is a lot better, and that we can actually do some stuff in person with our friends and such. So, piss off, 2020. <laughs> Hello, you're listening to Good Brews, Bad Views, the podcast that asks if great beer makes bad movies any better. I'm your host, coming to you from his secret desert oasis, Max Nostorowicz, and as always, from my co-host, rappling in up from off screen, Ryan Everhart. Hello, hello. And James Thorpe. Hello. And we have a very special guest for today's episode, coming in from the east, from the magical land known as Philly. You know him <laughs> from our episode on Robocop 3. It's Russ Johnson. Hello again, Russ. Hey, thanks for having me back. Yeah. Well, as a as a connoisseur of bad movies and I guess just movies in general, uh, we 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 couldn't uh, we couldn't say no to you you coming back. So, thank you. I chose a winner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's honest. It wasn't as bad as uh, Robocop. But we'll get to that. I think. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, you've you've suggested uh, many movies to us that have uh, made their presence on the podcast. Uh, yeah, I was, Bounty. yeah, I was a little surprised to see that actually oh, yeah. pop up. Uh, I had a... Was it... <laughs> <laughs> All I just think is that part in Jurassic Park of... Son of a bitch, you did it. You did it, you son of a bitch, you crazy son of a bitch, or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Jeff Goldblum, yeah. Yeah, and I and I think you were the person who first told me about Santa's sleigh. So we thank you for that one, though. Oh, yeah, genuinely awesome. Yeah, I know you guys love that one. Yeah, there's a a few. I'm trying to think if there's any other like magical Christmas ones, but I don't know. I I don't even like Christmas movies that much, but I've yeah, there's a few that I've found. (laughs) Yeah. Well, on to today's movie, though. Today we are continuing Suplexmas with a movie that's not really. Christmas themed, but um, it is wrestling themed. It is The Scorpion King, starring The Rock, which is itself a gift. So, right. Hey. <laughs> so how this podcast is going to work is we're going to be watching The Scorpion King, the 2002 spinoff from the Mummy series, starring Brendan Fraser, and Rachel Wise. I think was also in those movies. Yes. 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 So. We'll be watching Scorpion King. We'll be drinking some somewhat festive beers alongside of it. We'll be making some commentary alongside this movie, talking about, about what we like, what we don't like, what works, what doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera, and hopefully having a good time while, while doing so. The podcast is designed to be listened to alongside watching the movie, but in the event that you're just here for the auditory experience, we'll be doing our best to narrate what's happening on screen so you can follow along on home as you're doing whatever. Ryan, why don't you tell the folks at home where they can tune their sets if they're joining us for the movie as well? All right, folks. Uh, So once again, we find ourselves at the mercy of Amazon Prime for today's stream. Um, We have paused our particular stream just after the Universal Studios logo has completely faded from the screen and the fanfare has quieted down. Um, but just a quick reminder before we kick off here that if you don't have the time or the patience <laughs> to listen to the episode in its entirety, please check this episode's description for the timestamp to jump to to just kind of catch up on our uh, final thoughts on the beers, on the movie, and anything else that pops into our silly little brains along the way. Um, but back again, um, the Universal Studios logo has just faded. The fanfare has ended. So if you're watching along at home, press play now. This is a pretty short one. I was surprised yeah, it's only like ninety some minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I gotta open. I gotta open my beer, you guys. Mm, here we go. Oh no! <laughs> it feels like that. all the ninety minutes to me. I gotta be honest <laughs> with you. So we have this snowy opening, um, which is not, you know, Egypt and such like that. So I had to think, like, did I did I start watching the right movie? Because there's like yeah, five right. of these. Yeah, and it's interesting, like watching this twice in twenty four hours. Uh, which is not recommended. Just that it's a very <laughs> abrupt palette change to the scene. Just that that blue to this really just bland gold and copper, and this is kind of the color of the rest of the freaking movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Anytime we've got some color in this movie. It's it's very uh, you know surprising. 
Right. So we've got some warrior tribe just, you know, reveling, celebrating. They've captured someone. This guy. He's, we will find, an Acadian. Down. Uh, so pop quiz for James. Do you recognize that actor? He's from one of our favorite movies. This guy? The, the, the guy that's been captured. Or... Yeah, okay. the guy that's been captured. Uh, here's a line to help you remember. Doodoo paper. You're throwing doodoo paper at me. <laughs> He's the fucking bar owner from Forgetting Sarah Sarah Marshall. Marshall. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Classic. All right, so now we have uh, the rock laying siege to this this band of warriors. Well, we don't know who it is yet. <laughs> oh, we don't. For the yeah, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Spoilers. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I like how the rock's bow is so powerful. He hits people and they just go flying <laughs> through walls. When I, I, this, this made point, me laugh. Like... <laughs> yeah. Huh? Now this. Is... <laughs> yeah. I I wanted the whole movie to be this ridiculous. Like Max, you were saying that yeah. the, the dudes that get tagged with arrows just get launched out of the hut, just like into the sky, like yeah. <laughs> which is ridiculous. And the and rest like... of this movie is ridiculous, just not that ridiculous. If if yeah. any of you have ever played old video games, they get launched like if you hit the edge of the map in ATV Off-Road Fury. Right. <laughs> oh, God, you're right. It's like a Smash Brothers. Uh... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your percentage is way too high. Yeah. Rock just says the, the, you know, forward A charge attack. Yeah. If anything, like, it doesn't make sense that that's so powerful with the bow, but, like, when he hits a gun. Guy, the guy doesn't like turn into mist like it was like you know yeah. Ricky or the story of Ricky. <laughs> so also because of the rock's like super powerful bow shot or whatever, I thought like, is he already like imbued with some godlike powers? But no, he's just the rock. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's just the rock. Yeah, from what I was able to piece together, this takes place before what we see in the prologue of the Mummy Returns. If you're right, right, yeah, right. even bother getting into that. Yeah, we'll 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 get into that later. Yeah. So this is the Rock's first leading role in way back in 2002. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say back when he's normal sized, but he's always been buff. He's just he's a very not, large you know, man. He's just not you know ridiculously buff. Yeah, yeah. His, his body composition here is drastically different from where it is now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, like, around pain and gain, whenever whatever that was, oh, was God. like, when he, like, ballooned. Yeah, I fucking love that movie, <laughs> by the way. Ballooned? That's yeah, a great term um, for it. <laughs> pain and gain Sold. is hysterical and stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, no hmm. so we've yeah. got uh, a narrated exposition dump here. We're learning about Memnon, the greatest swordsman the world has ever seen. Get yeah. some neat like hieroglyph pans and zooms. Uh, that opening scene with all the chaos and the rock doing rock things uh, had a lot of very nondescript art rock music as well. And the, this movie's soundtrack is kind of all over the place, it seems. At yeah, times. I, I also noted that there's like weird rock-ish music at the beginning and also mm -hmm. at the ending of this movie. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's there's some bizarre choices for sure. <laughs> you don't <laughs> say. Less bizarre choices. What are we all drinking today? Because exposition, whatever. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll start. Oh yeah, who the <laughs> fuck cares? <laughs> um, so I'm drinking uh, bourbon barrel, just something pretty basic bourbon barrel stout from Central Waters, uh, which uh, has been a pretty solid brewery for me in the past. Um, and this is uh, excellent. That is all I have to say about that. <laughs> Over on my side, I've got a somewhat Christmas-themed beer. I've got Flying Buffalo's Cherry Cordial, Barrel-Aged Imperial Stout from Griffin Claw Brewing Company. I say tangentially Christmas because I used to get Cherry Cordials in my Christmas oh, yeah. a lot. For sure. So, yeah, it yeah. makes sense, yeah. So this is a big uh, old 12% stout, which is quite tasty. Yeah. Which is uh, I've got, it's got like uh, 500 variants of it. <laughs> I've got uh, from uh, Trogues in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania, um, their Mad Elf, which has been a used to be like a huge, like hard to find beer when I first moved here, and people would actually wait in lines for it. And then it became, oh, wow. um, yeah, well, yeah, and then it became like they started making a ton of it, so it, they started selling it now at the end of October, so it's no longer a big mm. thing anymore. 
So this is like the uh, Grand Crew um, special batch bomber of it Ooh. from uh, last year. So it's a Belgian style ale with a lot of honey and cherries. Oh, that yeah. That sounds nice. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a little overly sweet sometimes. So far, the Grand Cru is a lot more milder, which is nice. A lot more of the Belgian spice flavor. Mm hmm. So here we, here we have a council of people being like, ah, oh, Memnite Shyamalan's taking over the land. <laughs> and The Rock shows up and he's like, I will kill him. <sighs> so old Conan the Barbarian's like, they will kill him. <laughs> you you mean uh, the sh sheriff of uh, Nottingham or Rottingham, whatever, from Robin Hood Men's Heights. Oh, gosh, you're right. Jesus. Also, uh, from the West Wing, Lord John Marbury, one of like, the best characters in the oh! series. Yes! that's a He's such a ridiculous character. Yeah. The mo it feels like they needed to have like one overly British guy. Because <laughs> it's a Sword and Sandals movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, mo this movie desperately wants to have had the Conan license, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So we're we're learning that there apparently only remain three Acadians of that tribe. So the Rock and his two brothers, and they are uh, accepting a bounty to take out Memnon's sorcerer for blood rubies. Blood rubies. Fucking Michael Clark Duncan, man! What a boss! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fucking miss awesome. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. There are some shots later in this movie where the dude is just shirtless and he's just he's enormous. fucking impressive and just gigantic. Yeah. What a presence. Mm -hmm. he makes, I mean, he makes the rock look small. Yeah. Oh, yeah, insane. definitely, definitely. He was a great kingpin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the few good things I can say about that movie. Few indeed. Yeah. So we don't actually learn the rock's character's name, which is Matthias, until like 20-some minutes into this hour-and-a-half movie. <laughs> yeah, which made it confusing for me, because I was looking at the four straight to dvd sequels and i was trying to figure out like who was this character like who <laughs> if this if it's the same character in the other ones and it technically is but it's two different actors isn't it or, isn't one of them like like pre even this it's like more prequels yes, i think all of them are <laughs> it's just, like super young scorpion kings yeah really mm. so the rock and his brothers are infiltrating the encampment by night. So one of the things that, that I enjoy about this, that I do enjoy about this movie is one, um, young rock here reminds me a little bit like a uh, little bit of, of young Arnold. Yeah. I, I saw someone's little review for this and they're like, this movie works great. If you uh, divest it from the, from the, um, Mummy series, and just think of it as like a very early Conan story. He, yeah, he he just you can tell that he has a lot of charisma in this movie, right? He doesn't right. necessarily oh, act, yeah. act like he's not the best actor all the time, but he he has a ton of charisma. And the other yeah. thing from it that you can tell that's great for an action movie is that between a football background and a wrestling background, he is not just athletic, but he has a lot of body control. Like you can tell right. that he, the things he does look impressive on the screen because he's just impressive physically and impressive in capabilities. Yeah. yeah. Well, sort of in the, so in the next movie that he starred in was the rundown. And that movie has actually like in the first five minutes has a scene where like he walks past Arnold in a hallway. And this was when like Arnold was running for governor of California and they like shake hands. And it was, it was like, oh, it's like a handoff of like, the you, you are know, the next icon or yeah oh. dude the rundown is fucking great that's great that's movie. a great movie genuinely good movie yeah so is um walking tall he's great in that yeah too. yeah the rock he's actually has than... decent movies <laughs> yeah he's better than uh it's, i mean that's better than the original joe don baker so <laughs> i told my mother my friend and i were going to go see walking tall and we snuck into girl next door instead <laughs> uh 2003 a simpler time uh, isn't isn't emil hirsch in that i think so i don't know in girl next door i don't know why i don't know why i would remember that all right so spoilers but the rock and his brothers are pretty good at killing and sneaking yeah it turns out though so the rock notices some shenanigans it's a trap 
like nine million arrows come out of tents. But none yes, of them Emil launch anyone into space in the girl next door. He's the he's the main uh, he's the main kid. I just want them to bring back those retrograde uh, NASA designed arrows that the Rock had at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> each one with a different head. Yeah. <laughs> he, the Rock's firing three stage arrows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that sounds like a great dumb action movie sequence. It does, and I want to see it. <laughs> I mean, All we right, have so, a Disney Plus Hawkeye series. There you go. Hey, I'm yeah, excited about that. Right. Actually, I, I'm pretty excited about that. Particularly because it looks like it's based off the 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 Hawkeye series with like Pizza the Dog and stuff in it, which should be yeah, a lot of fun. Mad Faction. <laughs> Mad Faction, yeah. Which is Fraction, like, yeah, sorry. yeah Haw- the... Hawkeye is Tired, the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or what was the nickname for it? Hawk guy. I think Hawk was... Hawk guy. Yeah. 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 So the sorceress has identified Matthias. Uh, turns around, she's very scantily clad, as most women in this art movie are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. It was the style at the time. It was. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the rock. Is causing some more trubs. Some guards going down. As he repeatedly fights sequence. the same four stunt doubles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just draw a mole on your cheek. You're a different guy now. <laughs> aha, aha. So, and again, this is where we see a lot of what you were talking about, James. Just, you know, things look fluid and believable as far as physicality yeah. with the rock. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And Plus Kelly, he who the, he has the showmanship of being a wrestler that you know yeah, translates he, well to the screen. He right. knows how to add flair to his movements and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Exaggerate. I'm just glad to see that the uh, sorceress is way ahead of the early 2000s popped collar movement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and not just <laughs> a little that. bit, all the way. So much starch. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's beyond the top of her head. <laughs> So here, so look, we have Memnon here. The Rock just spat on his face. Uh, I thought that Memnon's haircut was going to be an allusion to just scorpions, because it kind of is shaped like a scorpion a little bit. But then also, the haircut is just on a lot of people in this movie, so I didn't think that was yeah. the point. He has a lot of scorpion motifs like all over yeah. him. So. Mm-hmm. so we found out Prince What's-His-Face is a traitor, killed old Conan mm-hmm. to become a lickspittle to Memnite. Memnon. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get that name wrong so many times. Well, I mean, after the rock spat on him, he's Flemonon now. Mm. Ah. Dump him. Uh. <laughs> You're welcome. James, what are you drinking? I'm drinking a present beer from Mr. Mr. Max. Oh. Uh, from City Built, the Cyberpunk, which is a mango gummy bear sour, which is delicious. Um, I will tell you, it is a it's a it's a sour with uh, lactose in it, and I'm really enjoying that trend of using the lactose to kind of cut yeah. down on the sourness while while still having a lot of the flavor. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, cool. I, yeah. Pennsylvania New Trail had a really good uh, orange uh, one that was that it was a sour with orange and uh, lactose and, and vanilla. Oh, that's a nice flavor combination. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. Cool. It was, kind of. Yeah, and that was in the summer, and it was refreshing in the summer, yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't tried that beer yet that I gave you, James, but it's it's on my short list. Ryan, you've got one coming your way as well, once I Woo! make it out to your side of town. Um, All right. City Built also brewed uh, No Safe Point, which is one of the uh, Run the Jewels Cyberpunk 2077 collaboration beers. So, nice. Oh. Um, when you purchase the beer, is it a big square, and then over time it eventually renders itself into an actual can <laughs> probably but it's got some <laughs> sick sick label art so is, is it a bottle full of just soaked used cigarettes and like pickles and dildos and then, I, and then I'm, yes. they tell me i can return it and then i can't <laughs> i that blows my mind yeah like that's, who thought that's that putting that much. press conference out was a, or that, like that idea out was a good idea it, that's astonishing to me yeah anyway so the rock watched Memnon kill his brothers. Well, his other brother had died via arrows. The second brother was had his throat slit. 
uh, right in front of the rock. He did not follow Run the Jewels' advice of don't get captured, and instead got captured. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready for some, awful, for some awful CG ants? Oh, yeah. These are rough. It's... Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, this is it's... the closest, like, the bad CG I am. Almost the thing that makes me think yeah. this is a part of the Mummy series the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the the mummies the mummy, mummy movies love their swarms of insects and bugs or yeah. just swarms of anything. Mm-hmm. Yep. I remember was, rem- Oh go ahead, Russ. There was something I was reading on IMDb where like in one of the press releases they said this was actually, like they were actually ants in this and then like all the special features on the like showed that this was you know also, like recording a CGI and so like somebody lost you know the press release. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I just remember in the, you know, we first see The Rock as the actual, like, half scorpion, half king in the mummy movies, right? And uh, I just remember recoiling in disgust at how terrible that looked. I saw that opening weekend, and the theater started laughing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We weren't upset. Like, I think the theater was fine with the movie up to that point, and then he comes out out to all the fanfare. (laughs) And I just I have that memory stuck in my head of everyone just cracking up. Yeah, that's uh, that sucks. <laughs> so the Rock is on to his second of several sidekicks at this point. Hmm. Yeah, which this movie is yeah. comprised of three things: the Rock having sidekicks, people repelling from stuff, and archery. It, mm-hmm. It's Conan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only thing I know this dude from is is Congo. That's ah! where he, I recognize him from. I he knew. Was the, uh, yeah, he was the buddy to the ape guy. Yeah. So this uh, skinny sidekick, comic relief guy, is drinking oh, alcohol. Oh, the people's chin takes down an ant. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the rock is killing ants with his chin, and now he's just eating them. Yeah, <laughs> spitting them out. Him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. It's just terrible. Is eighteen years old, but like, yeah, the CGI is bad, but it's not like offensively bad. Like, it's fine yeah. for like a no. A, it's fine for a th- no, it, it's fine for a uh, a swarm of things. Like I can tell. I mean, when it's when it's zoomed out, it's not that bad. When it gets when it gets up close, you're like, okay, it gets a little badder. Worse, the, whatever. The evil <laughs> shag carpet does not meet my standards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watching. Uh, I'm, so I'm sitting in my laptop right now watching this. Um, you're that, sitting in your laptop. The... Totally. <laughs> you guys don't hear that telltale laptop echo. Um. But uh, yeah, the ants look significantly less terrible on a tiny screen. When I watched this the other day, I was sitting in front of my 77-inch TV, and it looked real bad then. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so now we're back at Memnon's Palace. The sorceress is just enjoying the luxury of palace life. Luxury. Luxury. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Crystals. (laughs) <laughs> yes. uh, so she can uh, the sorceress can divine the outcome of battles yet to be but only if she has a tropey if a tropey thing doesn't happen to her mm-hmm. right meanwhile she'll just do her mancala readings mm-hmm. mancala readings so sh- oh James as the classics guy Acadians yes. are not real uh civilizations are they or tribe of people uh i don't know if they're trying to make a reference to something but i mean there's like assyrians (laughs) Mm -hmm. because this is supposed to take place you know a couple thousand years before like the pyramids are built so we're talking very very early um, yeah i mean we're we're talking upwards of twelve thousand years ago the pyramids are really old. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, frighteningly old. Excuse me. No. So, uh, Memnon's just being a general D-bag right now, talking to the sorceress. He's just talking about his big plans. It's bringing order from the chaos. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. Hmm. He's Kelly, who looks... Go ahead. No, you're good. I was going to say, Kelly Who looks really familiar as well, but I, I can't pinpoint if she looks like someone else in this case, or if I've actually just seen her in another thing. 
Uh, Ryan, have you developed the... face blindness? <laughs> Probably. She was, at least for me, the um, in X Men Two, she was the like Lady Wolverine. Oh, Lady Deathstrike. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I I, uh, Mariko, I think was her name that they called her that, like her actual. Hmm. They never called uh, her yeah, they don't. They don't actually give her. Name. They don't actually give her the actual her her comic name, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the crazy ass outfit either. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I need to revisit the, some of those older, early aughts superhero films. Mm. They are an experience at times. I will tell you that. I've been Next. getting the itch to watch the fucking Blade movies again. Oh, those are good. Those are actually yeah. really good They're still. still good. Uh, excepting yeah. perhaps yeah. the third, but yeah. Yeah. I don't get okay. the third doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. I think I've only watched that twice or something. We, yeah, it doesn't count. Hey. You mean you mean Prison Break Dracula isn't good enough for you? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> if you can't yeah. handle me, my at my Blade Three, you don't deserve me at my Blade One. <laughs> no. Uh, all right. So where are we? Um, yeah. Come like on. So, <laughs> yeah, I like the whole Malmuke thing, which is kind of cool. I'm down with mm. that. mm Hmm. For for being 2002, this movie has a fairly diverse cast. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. <laughs> I like the little head pat there. That's kind of... Like, it, the movie has a lot okay, of little buddy. humor like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so in order to sneak into the palace, The Rock, having just learned that his sidekick is a wanted man, just simply knocked him out and says he's taking <laughs> him in for a bounty. Pulling a Chewie in the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Jesus, what a big dude. Yeah. So we've got uh, the market life here. It's a bustling inside the palace walls market. Yep. I, d- I do kind of like this little scene of being like, sorry I knocked you out, have some wine. And yeah, the community like... being like, the last thing I remember is a huge fist coming at my face. <laughs> Are and, and this... Go ahead, Russ. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, watching this, their relationship is like one to one identical to Sloan's and Rob Schneider's and Judge Dredd. <laughs> oh God, you're <laughs> right. Just putting that out there. It's all coming together. Hundred percent right. Just replace Snyder's skill as like a hacker with uh, his skills as a thief. I'm putting yeah. my hand over the rock's top of his head. Let's just see, like you know, you know, like <laughs> that one scene on the, on the prison transport. <laughs> and that's that's them with their head buried in the sand, like. They, that's mm-hmm. how they joined together because they were prisoners together in their yeah. earlier encounter. So the I rock... thought one of those ladies in the harem was Aisha Tyler. Yeah, so the Couldn't rock walked sure. by a um, house of ill repute, and the, the ladies were like, maybe one of us can help you. And then one of them was like, maybe all of us can help you because the ladies <laughs> want to get with the rock. Of course. No one can blame them. Mm-hmm. This and doesn't look like anything the like the Gotham City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now uh, s- some street rats are offering street to be a guide rat. for the rock. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, c- I cannot remember this this young boy's name. name so I'm going to call him Aladdin. <laughs> yeah. His his name is like T two or something like that. So T uh, two has stolen the rocks. Sacred cool, blood, blood diamond. He's making his way downtown. <laughs> yeah, running fast, getting away with the rocks cash. <laughs> All right, well played. You're well, thank you. Um, so we just have just very ho hum. Find the guy who stole my thing scene. Yep. I do like this, though. So the Rock is tapping these large containers. I don't know what the names of these are. James may. Um, but he notices that this one sounds a little different. What's inside? Boy for sale. Boys. Boy yeah. for sale. <laughs> so uh, the kid hands the sack back to the Rock. The Rock is feeling his sack. It's a little different. He Something's off. Kid's got a ruby in his mouth. Good work, kid. Nice try. 
That was there's so there's so many scenes in this movie where I'm like they had to stop him from doing the people's eyebrow. Oh yeah. Yeah. He does I, do it I, once. He does, yep. Later. Yep. But it's at that point it's like, aha, I knew you couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah. I do appreciate that that he he's like, Oh, okay, this kid knows what he's up what's up. Would yep. you like like you wanna earn this? I thought that was a yep. cool little moment. Yeah. And he's uh you know, in general the rock has good charisma, but much like we noticed with Hulk Hogan um, in Santa with Muscles, his chemistry is ex- pretty exceptional with kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it comes from the wrestling movie... background. Yeah. What was that movie he was in where he's a football player and he has a daughter? Oh, oh God. Is it uh, the Tooth Fairy? Well, he was in that. But... No. No, it wasn't the Tooth Fairy. Yeah. He, he has like a secret it was daughter a... or something like that. I. But either way, yeah, term. he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gridiron. Oh, fuck, uh, I think it was a different movie with him. I don't know. Anyways, he he acts well with children. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, comes through here for sure. So uh, mm-hmm. they've the the Rock and the boy have stumbled upon the the palace scientist who's working on a Chinese invention that can move mountains. Yep. A powder. If you guys are hearing banging, my cat is playing in a box, so I apologize. <laughs> okay. If you guys are hearing banging, my cat is practicing Jamaican street music. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got a, a training scene of Memnon just ruining Beating his, up uh, Japanese his, people. Yeah, his training buddies. I I kind of do like the idea that they're showing that he has conquered or is world traveled, I guess. Yeah. Right, that he's just got opponents from all over to, you know, to yeah. to own his own his skills. Boom, 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 boom. So the rock is uh paying the kid. Yeah. Good job, kid. Game plan. That's the movie with mm-hmm. the rock and happy yeah. the kid. Mm. So the next part of Memnon's little training exercise is he is going to attempt to catch an arrow that is shot at him. He's going to Houdini this. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Eh? The training partner and the rock both drawing their bows. Ooh, Memnon caught the arrow from his training partner. So Aladdin was captured. Gasp! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is some bullshit. <laughs> I mean, the guy is a psycho, of course, so, I mean, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So he's accused of stealing because he has the ruby. Yeah, the kid has the rock's ruby. Ruby, rock and ruby. So Prince Douche, what's his face? <laughs> who is wearing anachronistic armor for this time, which <laughs> annoys me to no end. Prince Douchington. So the rock has he's wearing a full chainmail hauberk while everyone's, Mm. you know, wearing very uh, wielding very crude arms and armor, Mm -hmm. even for the even for the area of the world they're in. But so the rock had to decide between uh, saving the kid or taking out Memnon. He saved the kid, of course, because the movie still has some time left. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) about an hour. So the rock is back in the scientist's lair. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The scientist the seems very familiar. A... Yeah, the rock is inspecting a catapult, which was originally used as a transportation device, <laughs> but did not pan out. So there's that. Yeah, the scientist says he hadn't figured out the landings. <laughs> mm-hmm. At first, I thought it was going to be a hot. <laughs> Oh, I know. That's Bernard Hill. You may know him as Theoden King. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I thought um, I thought at first it was going to be a hot air balloon. And, like, he didn't know how ah. to, like, make it come down without just collapsing. Oh. <laughs> no, that's Waterworld, James. There's, no, there's the people's there. eyebrow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, if we want sweet hot air balloon tech, you should... Hook up with the chick from Ghosts of Mars and fucking do Oh, stupid. God. 
Just release nasty shit on the whole fucking planet. <laughs> A plague of ghosts. Mm-hmm. Ghosts. Spook dust. This guy's actually gigantic also, this guard. Yeah. No idea what his name is. Thorax. So the rock land is his name? Yes. Played by the actor I think so. Ralph Mueller. Mm. Mueller? Mm. And here's the horror. A bunch of stuff, but I don't recognize them from anything. Hmm. So the harem uh, were totally playing up the rock yeah. while they were seducing all his fucking weapons and everything. Yeah. Which I thought yeah, was kind of cool, actually. That. So the rock is just fighting empty-handed. Just ruining people. But of course. Slice, dice, maneuver. With these, with those two guards who first come in to the harem, I was expecting the Rock to kick one of them between the legs and them to be eunuchs. Right. But, oh. Okay. Huh. Well, you, you know what they it, say. I mean, it would have been a crude joke, but one I would not put past mm. this movie of making. Yep. Here we are. Harem today, gong tomorrow. Yep, uh, yep, 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 yep. I, I, the guy shooting the arrows at the rolling. At, the, at him while he's behind that huge shield. Yeah. It's just really not, bizarre. not shooting now when they had a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Look, they can choose to either move or they can choose to shoot. They cannot do both within one round. That's just the rules of the system. Yep. The, the teachings of the Stormtrooper Academy have, are timeless. <laughs> it's all oh, time other, the other component of this movie is the rock falling through roofs into beautiful women. Hmm. Yes, apparently. This is, I think, the second of like four or five occurrences. No, this is the third. He fell into the he fell into the sorceress's tent. He fell into the harem, and he falls into the sorceress's bath. Uh, she comes out, you know, nude as one does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you bathe yes. with clothes on, Ryan? No, not usually. <laughs> <laughs> that door cracks me up because it looks like it's made of cardboard. Yeah. I thought they were just going to hold their breath until the fucking guards took off, but just Yeah, that's what I was expecting as well. <laughs> yeah. This this is a great joke I think that happens here. I just wish they would have set it up sooner with this kid about to throw yeah. a nickel into the wishing well. Like they should have shown yeah. him when they arrived at town. <laughs> So the young boy throws, you know, a nickel into this or a coin into this fountain, makes a wish, and then the naked sorceress comes out. <laughs> so the boys all, gods be praised. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Don't make me change my mind, he says. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still drinking at the bar, still hanging out. Yep. Still having a good time. Screaming and yelling. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> hey, Ryan, pause the video. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, Russ, can you hear us? All right, Looks Russ. Like, he, like Russ you're still part mobile. of the voice. Oh, hold on. Da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> 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 Hmm. Hi, lady. Hi, Katie. We are having a connection issue. Did you have cake? Hey, 
Freddy, Freddy. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Katie has a blanket over her shoulders and Gabe is trying to figure out a way to get into the blanket that she has she's wearing like a shawl. <laughs> if you just kept Ryan, your pants you on, it'd be better. Ryan, what did you mean by I'll, I'll flip over briefly? Oh, sorry, uh, the two Discord because when I remember when I flipped to this window the um uh the screen that I'm sharing goes dark. Oh, what, what, I so what I do you guys see right now? I think that's a, a um, hmm. that is a Google issue, I believe. Something with the you browser. Guys, so you guys still see the movie, or do you not? I still see the movie. Oh, okay. Everett has minimized her application. Sit tight. Yeah. I bet you didn't even know what. Think I knew what a you googly was. <laughs> Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, trying to get Russ to disconnect from the audio and rejoin, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, he's typing. <laughs> Hurry. Little phone icon. Where's an X? Boop it, city. Boop it, city. Your market will be this way. So James, Walmart canceled your second order because uh, they were both tried on the same card. Correct. Mm. I mean that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It still stinks. Yeah. Where are you in God of War? I have. Um, so I I just got Atreus uh, cured of his sickness and had to get the heart of the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, okay. That game is enormous. Good lord. Dude, it's, it's fucking huge. I just... Uh... I just I like finished it. playing Bloodstained, which is like the spiritual Ooh. successor to Symphony of the Night. Right. Highly recommend it. It's supposed to be good. It's very good. Very, very good. That's a George Orbink's favorite. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wait, what? Why did you... Okay. Not sure why he left the server. What is going on here? Yeah, I've been enjoying very much the lore in God of War. And for me, like, I don't know anything about most of that stuff. Um, still pretty cool, though. Yeah, I've really, really, really been enjoying to, um, getting to see a lot of that stuff. Um, the the Norse mythologies are, are pretty um, underrepresented in a lot of like modern cult like culture mm -hmm. um, like i said part the, of it is because uh, of the you know white supremacists basically yeah yeah stealing all yeah. that stuff um the next uh the next magic set supposed to be like a norse theme it's called uh like kaldheim i think so oh, that's cool yeah they started previewing cards uh this week Funnily enough, they like they're reaching out to like metal bands because they're they're like they're really trying to like being like it's like a metal y you know Viking y set. So they had like Mastodon like preview some cards a couple days ago. <laughs> oh wow. Like, okay, cool. 
but you know, they got dwarves and Valkyries and okay, changelings and elves. So you know, that's cool. Should be fun. Yeah, that's a, that's really cool. Um, it, it's it's neat. I I think the like it. Like we were talking about the, or I, I put on the on the um, whatever it's called, Slack. Slack. A lot of the Norse mythology is it, gritty is the wrong word, but it's it's not so like it's very vast and big without being, um, like there we go, like high handed, like it's very Sorry. much like guy with big sword goes and fights big monster. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, is fine. Not for us, it happens. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Neil, Neil Gaiman did a uh, collection called Norse Mythology, which is very accessible. Uh, that I recommend checking yeah, out. Yeah, we have not. Which is which is cool. Uh, part that's part of the problem of of Norse mythology is that the Eddas aren't necessarily like coherent at times. Like, there's a lot of just random stories and weird stuff that goes on there. Um, mm-hmm. There's not like. There's no, you know, I mean, like, if you're in, if you're like, I'm going to read some Greek mythology, you can be like, I can read the Odyssey, right? Or something along those lines. Like, the the, the Eddas are all over the place, and they're a lot of fun. They're, like, really cool. There's some really neat stories and, and a lot of um, really interesting ideas in them, but um, it, it's hard to, to just kind of, like, start somewhere. Right, right. Russ, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Great, great. Yeah, I, I think one of the goals of Gaiman's collection he, is he tries to he, he tries to make them coherent and put them in a sort of sequential order as far as like in the scope of like the stories like here's where it starts and then you know Ragnarok at the end so yeah yep okay all right uh Ryan want to get back back into this uh am I gonna have to re- get going or do we lose Ryan now or Ryan go potty he, he probably going potty yeah, I'm going to go fine. then just use this time. Yep. Yep. Do the needful. Boop, 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 boop. But I, uh, the first game I picked up for the PC that I could not run before is uh, Control, which I've heard nothing but good things oh, yeah. about. Randy rants and raves about that. It's by the same people who made uh, Alan Wake. No, Ryan, we cannot hear you right now. Nope. Working as intended. Yep. <laughs> Try them disconnect. Can you hear us? Question mark. I would think so, because we were talking about how he went potty. Okay. There you go. Yep. Disconnect from audio and reconnect. Why am I typing it out? You can hear me. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. All right. We have new problems. Yeah. (laughs) That's the way 2020 goes. Problems. Problems. I'll take audio problems over weird existential bullshit. On we. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Use that word a lot this year. <sighs> All right, nerds. Hello. Can now? Huzzah! Hey, we can hear you. Yeah. Ryan, collect. Ugh. All right. Well. Good talk. <clears throat> All right. Uh, y'all can still see the stuff. No. Uh, you're not sharing your screen, so mm. not currently. Push on that button. There we go. 
Okay. There we go. Who mm. just drops? Uh, not no, I. Not I. All right. You guys, never, you guys... never mind then. All right, we're good. Never. All right. Press play. Uh, any, any specific? Is Alistair still going? Yeah, Alistair's still going. All right. Good luck resyncing this, Max. We are currently at. I just got. 35... A, I just got a. I just got to cut off a bunch of middle section. Right. Thirty-five eleven. Okay. Thirty-five eleven. Yep. All right. There we go. What an outfit, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Master, master of disguise. No. <laughs> no. Shh. Never say those words. Yeah. Hush. Armpit is the guy's name because it's like armpit. Uh, yeah. The, the the subtitles are the only way I know some of these characters' names. Armpit the thief. The the sorceress is apparently named Cassandra. <laughs> oh yeah, I would have never guessed. Yeah. I well, I mean. So Cassandra, the, the sort Cassandra being a sorceress is fine because Cassandra was someone in mythology that could see the future, but no one listened to her. Oh. Hmm. Okay. And that's why I'm around. That's, yeah, this is why we keep you around. <laughs> that's just a metaphor for present day science. And like, and Memnon is the the only thing I could think of every time they said that was Agamemnon. Agamemnon, yeah. yeah. Yep. Like the name of the, the kid's cat in that fucking elves movie we watched. Remember yes, the cat's name was yes. Agamemnon. <laughs> yep. That movie just came up uh, from someone I follow on Twitter being like, "Oh my oh gosh, God. The cat!" <laughs> and I'm like, "I know, right?" It's a good joke. This... Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now we have Memnon just with a bucket of scorpions, I guess. <laughs> yeah. As fun fact in Egypt. Hmm. Fun fun fact: Memnon in this movie has the exact same haircut as Agamemnon in the movie Troy. Huh. Hmm. I mean, this is right when Hollywood was getting back into sword and sandals. Yeah, post gladiator. Right. Yep. Although, like initially, I mean, you get. I listened to the you guys' uh, "Got of Egypt" episode recently, so you guys talked about. It a I'm sorry bit to hear that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch it long. I, I didn't have to say that again. Um, but uh, you guys kind of got to a little bit of that, where it was like it was clearly like Gladiator, and then after that, there was this intention of like not so much this, but like realistic sword and sandals. So Troy is mm. you know the you know um, Iliad, but like all the mythology stripped out of it. And, um, Alexander, yeah. Alexander, yeah, and then yeah. like. Then 300 comes along, like, oh, we can have, you know, mythology back. And... Right. Yep. If anything, that movie gave Zack Snyder too much power. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Concur. I mean, on the one hand, it showed that R rated movies could be, R rated genre movies could be uh, profitable at the box office. Yeah. But on the other hand, Zack Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, and what's what's interesting out of that is that Zack Snyder basically just literally filmed the comic book 300. Like there, oh, are, that's, that's there are literally his shtick. Yeah, yeah Watchmen. at the time, Knowing like Watchmen. That. Yeah, but like it works with 300, right? Because it's a very visually striking book. Like yeah. it, it just it it gave him to your point, Max. Like it gave him a bunch of power. But really, if you handed that book to anybody, like we could direct a movie if they're like, make this book a movie. You're like, all right, well, let's do it. Because like there's no there's no different camera angles or anything. He's he's just taking the comic book straight up. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's a later period Frank Miller where his storytelling is mm, a little yeah. different. Which we discussed on RoboCop three, <laughs> with yeah. like Frank Miller and how he went crazy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so we're learning uh, as the sorceress tried to escape the rocks and Campman at night that uh, she is no fan of Memnon. She's not necessarily trying to leave the rock, but she just doesn't want to go back to Memnon. <clears throat> Sorry, Flemnon. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, and you gotta keep that consistent. <laughs> consistency, consistency. It's the key to comedy. Yeah. Mm. Russ, I'm glad that you've remembered stuff we talked about during RoboCop 3 because I sure as hell don't. 
<laughs> I mean, you guys have done over 100 of these at one, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, yes, I suppose. But it's not like you haven't also watched several hundred movies since then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I... Right, right. Sorry. Yeah, but, but he, he's only had one moment where he had to talk to the three of us, as opposed to us, yeah. who've had many moments where we've had to talk to each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the times, if I'm trying to express a bad movie, it's to my wife, and she just <laughs> eyes glaze over and <laughs> nods along. He, yeah. he only or, had or one moment. Your daughter just doesn't, doesn't yeah, oh, respond. Yeah. <laughs> she might pick out a word, so. Or if she watched Robocop with me, and she'd be happy about the shiny man. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> Let's make a mockbuster and just call it Shiny Police. <laughs> wrapped in tinfoil. <laughs> Can we watch Mad Max instead? That has a better Desert Storm. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, uh, it. I recently rewatched all four of those movies, and hmm. mwah. Yeah. <laughs> Fury Road is a goddamn masterpiece. Yeah, I mean they're all. I I even love Thunderdome. So. Thunderdome is probably, b- before Fury Road, was probably the most culturally significant of all three yeah. of them. Thunderdome. So, yeah. Thunderdome. The Rock is riding alone against this small band of guardsmen. They think that the sun has baked his brain. Yeah. But we're going to get uh, some of his home field advantage here. He knows the storms yeah. are coming. Booyah, yeah. there's storm. Yep. Because it's a movie by Stephen Sommers. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a storm. There will be repelling. That the storm looks great until there's people until the where he's riding that riding in there, and then it's like just really bad uh, green screen effect. Yeah. 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 This looks fine though. This is good. Yeah, it looks like it's guys in a, either outside getting them blown on them, or at least in a studio having sand blown on them, but. <laughs> not, not fake sand. I think it's a hundred percent digital with just some fans blowing just to make it look like there's a storm going on. But this it's, shot it, definitely. I, I I appreciate digital. the the blowy 1940s wind noises that they're using in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and here we we now go into some caves. Which who doesn't love a good cave set? Time for a Zelda sequence. Almost an Indiana Jones sequence. Hmm. What? Oh yeah, that. Like, oh, okay. This this yeah, guy falls into a. This, I forgot yeah. where this was going. <laughs> falls into a sinkhole, and the second guy's like, well, "All right," steps yeah. in the exact same spot. <laughs> the, the second guy, Penny Arcade Ninja, guidance it. <laughs> I never <laughs> believed in that so guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the real deal. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Trying to remember all the ones from Last Crusade, the Penitent Man shall pass, uh, Leaf from the Lion oh, Head. With an eye. <laughs> yeah, yes. Dude, I want to experience a sand water, a sand fall. I think that'd be cool. It's a lot of sand. A lot of sand. I hate sand. It gets <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> sand is good. You be I, quiet. I like that the rock is like a a cave demon. Yeah, <laughs> in this scene. <clears throat> Bye. Yes, this, this is very like like desert Batman sequence right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, even You're to the dead, end but... scene, like the end mm-hmm. scene is is straight out of a Nolan Batman film. Mm-hmm. Uh, last guy's dead, but at least he's ex- exfoliated. <laughs> or going back to the Frank Miller connection, Holy Terror, which was going to be a Batman versus Al Qaeda. Or Al Qaeda uh, comic mm-hmm. until DC was like, no, nah, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> we don't. We don't. Wise think move. This with your usual grace. <laughs> and, he just, <laughs> and he just erased the ears off the character and yeah. kept the story the same. Oh, and he, did he, is, wasn't he like orange then instead of like blue or gray? Like... I thought it was in black and white. So <sighs> I've never actually read it. I just remember thumbing through it and being like, this is insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is There's just straight a... up a Batman sequence. It really yeah. is. <laughs> just just need some Hans Zimmer score. 
So just just quick swear. cuts of the rocks zipping around in the shadows. Dudes being lifted off to the ceiling. I don't. Re- I don't remember this issue of Return of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> this is probably the goriest scene of the movie. The dude impaled on a. Oh yeah, uh, a lag might. I forget. Yeah, I forgot about that. Is that yeah. is that really the only like blood in the movie? Uh, there's a couple scenes at the near the finale where there is some blood, or you can you can definitely hear blood uh, yeah. being yeah. spilled. Yeah, but yeah. but visually, like, that's the most I think that we just saw. Yeah. And you don't actually see the guy getting impaled; you just see the after effects. Right. Yeah. So uh, one of the guards that was just felled has the arrow that was previously dipped in poison by Memnon earlier, which we talked over. That's right, yeah. Yep. Sorry to ruin the uh, emotional narrative that this movie has assembled. Mm. So the storm has passed. Arpid and the sorceress are climbing out of the sand. That sky cleans up nice after a sandstorm. Nice blue sky. So they're trying to find. I oh, love those uh, stock camel sound effects. Mm-hmm. The cool rock music sequence. Well, this was a this was a trailer shot. Him pulling the mask off yeah. as he gets out of the sand. Yeah, for sure. You guys, we're gonna need an awful lot more sand to cover this guy up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the rock pulled the poison arrow out of his thigh. Yep. His meaty thighs. Mm-hmm. And the effects. And thus, the rock was bitten by a radioactive scorpion and became <laughs> the Scorpion King. <laughs> One can only hope that he has as cool as a theme as Aerosmith did for Spider-Man. So, uh, it's nighttime again. Three of them are huddled around a fire. The rock is sweaty and obviously poisoned. Yes. The camel is concerned. (laughs) You speak... (laughs) Are you, are you the ha- well, yeah, this is how you cure people of things, by the way. Yeah, this this is a scene that gets adolescent males rewinding and pausing 10 million times as she mm-hmm. mounts the rock here. <laughs> will, will her mounting him help? Couldn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably won't hurt. <laughs> so here we see that she actually does have some actual magic, and it's not just Hokum when she mm. sucks some light out of him. Out of his yeah. face. Bad Dear listener, out of his face. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think is... light means, Ryan? You, they, you said suck. I just want to make sure everyone knows this is a family movie. Hey, we're tagged with explicit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, the whole poisoning thing, I guess, is just a device to affirm that the sorceress is indeed not, you know, a hack like like you were saying, Matt. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, also, she says to him, if she, if he survives, he'll have the blood of the scorpion within him always. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. like, why would they call him the Scorpion King otherwise? Because, mm. like, Memnoth's got all the scorpion iconography. Mm. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like, I'm just going to come in and just take all your stuff and call it my own. Mm. I mean, that's not, that's pretty lame. I, I can't remember. Do they explain that more in uh, Mummy Returns? They Russ? do vaguely. Yeah, yeah, like he at one point he strikes a bargain with Anubis to get his power, like to get an army. The army and, and the signifier of him doing that because uh, he's out in the desert dying is eating a scorpion that was given to him. Ah. Uh. And then obviously once we see him as the worst special effect ever made. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like a scorpion centaur. Yeah. So uh, 
the rock sent the raven back to Memnon, the messenger raven, back with uh, thorax uh, necklace thingy. Mm-hmm. You smug bitch. Ugh. <laughs> I I do like the costuming of this movie. Other yes. than the fucking betrayer prince. Uh, other guy. than Chainmail McGillicuddy. You're just, yeah. you're very defensive. You're very defensive. You're chainmailing. Yeah. Dis- discount yeah. Eric Bana. <laughs> Dude, yes, absolutely. I... Yep. Yeah. I'm very he, defensive of my chainmail, considering I made my own I know, I suit of it. <laughs> he looks exactly like Eric Bana from Troy, by the way. <laughs> when the movie first got underway, James, uh, when I watched it the other day, I was convinced it was Eric Bana for like 20 seconds. But yeah, I absolutely Eric discount Bana. Eric Bana. Yeah. <laughs> that entrance, I saw it. I'm like, it's it's the entrance of, uh, what was it, Tim from Monty Python the Holy Grail? Right. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought, too. <laughs> he just needs to scream, look at the bones! <laughs> I recently rewatched hills. that for the first time in years, and it's it still holds up. Oh, yeah. It's absurd. It's completely perfect. <laughs> that, Life of Brian, and, uh, what's of the other the clip ones? Um, Meaning of Life? Now, Actually, I think I prefer it now for something completely different because that's more just uh, like a, a super sized version of like Flying Circus. Oh, okay. I mean, Meeting Life is really good too, but like now for something completely different is probably my third favorite of the films. I actually don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, it, and some of them is just straight up repeats of clip, uh, sketches from uh, Flying Circus, which is shot better and like a little bit longer. Uh, but Right, right. I think here we have the I... uh, ancient Viet Cong. Yeah, we got the <laughs> uh, the Egyptian ghillie suits. <laughs> yeah. They true. were uh, apprehended at a tiny oasis. Hey, James, remember that one time we were playing D&D and we had a character who uh, insisted upon walking around in a ghillie suit with everyone else, just, you know, walking around in armor and regular gear? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a tool. <laughs> So, hey, it's Aladdin. Yeah. It's Aladdin, Aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that kid has a fucking mortgage now. That's how old this movie is. <laughs> like, that kid has two more. It has two or three yeah. mortgages now. God damn, Michael Clark Duncan. Yes. With he's I just got such a present. The most obvious wig ever. <laughs> It's a very Mad Max hair, haircut. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. couple of the characters have that, like uh, Isis as well, I think. That's kind of a Mad Maxy feel. So they're arguing over what to do with the new prisoners. Because that's Isis now, is it not? Yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. So Balthazar, which is Michael Clark Duncan's character, is like, bring me the woman! And the rock defends her. No. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) And uh, And then about a thousand pounds of man starts a fight. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just just a human kaiju battle. (laughs) I do like that the short, the sword sh- shattering is like immediately at the start of the fight. Yeah, right? that they're so strong, and they couldn't even yeah take a single strike from the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good uh, head bash timed with the music. That was yeah. This movie's just silly. <laughs> It, it needed to be more, like often many of the movies yeah. we watch, it just needs to be more. Yeah, it right? needs to be like the opening. Yeah. And I think it, um, I think it gets there by the end. Hmm. But we'll talk I don't about think it, that. I don't think it ever reaches the heights of the of the opening physically. No, or, no, 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 or, no. Yeah. 
Ugh. So it's 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 a sufficiently, you know, just brutal slugfest with these two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hits him with the right rock dead. balls. Rock Who balls through thing. <laughs> yeah, in wrestling, we'd call it, this would be called. There's a. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of a John Williams feel to the soundtrack here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Who did the score? Like Indiana Jones, <laughs> specifically. Ha 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 ha! So uh, now they've got like spear type items, or staff type items, I suppose. Staves, mm-hmm. staves. <laughs> two, two shots of just biceps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flexing, uh, flexing threateningly. Yes. Yeah. So the rock comes out on top, spear to the neck of Balthazar. And this goes as everyone would expect, having you know, watched the movie up until this point. Yep. I, I sentenced you to becoming my newest sidekick. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Like fucking sand-covered Pikmin following him around. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, Olimar was like a tier Super Smash Brothers character. <laughs> uh, just quick health check on Russ. He's still with us. He sounded quiet last yeah. time. Just want to make sure you're still yeah, here. All right, cool. I'm here. All right, Woo. everybody, good. <laughs> I didn't have any input. <laughs> no, that's cool. Russ is just quietly regretting his decision to join us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I was hoping for Suburban Commando, but... but... <laughs> That's not the way the votes went. I know. I, I believe you. I mean, if you guys flashback actually to my episode, uh, when we were talking about, like, what movies... Uh, what was the first bad movie you saw? And I'm like, why well, like bad movies when I was a kid without knowing they were bad? And then one of the re- movies I referenced was Suburban Commando. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have sense. you back for that. No, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, Congo lost in a poll, but we eventually just did it because we're drunk on our own power and our right, okay. booze. <laughs> Equal parts. So the sorceress is seeing a vision of the, the current encampment being slaughtered by Memnon's forces. Yep. Because she touched the kid, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Touch me. I want to <laughs> see the future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do, do, do. So it's flaming mm. arrows everywhere. You get it. You took the alchemy upgrade in Age of Empires. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So, oh, there it is, Cassandra. So she's increasingly distressed by the chaos that Memnon brings the ruin, the destruction. And uh, Arpit has just been losing arm wrestling matches to some of the women at the camp. (laughs) (laughs) And Sand has to get all manner of places with outfits like these. No orifice unfilled. (laughs) That sharpening sword was a um, euphemism. Visually, with him holding his crotch. The sword looks so out of place, though. It's like it's so, like pristine looking in comparison with everything else being all shiny and junk. Yeah, it's. I uh, think this, this is a really bad analogy from her metaphor. I don't know. It's gone now. It doesn't matter anymore. Hmm. So she's it, warning the rock that Memnon is a coming. Yeah. At least what she's saying. Mm. Go well. The uh I think the problem with the sword that he has in this one, to go back to that, is it looks cheap. Yeah. Not a lot of the other weaponry and, and, and props in this movie actually look pretty decent, but that looks cheap. Mm-hmm. You will die by the hands of a mook. The literal yes. worst yeah. beat <laughs> for a named character. That is not a death worthy of Valhalla. I mean, wrong wrong mythology, but still, though. We were talking about God of War. Mediocre. Tried that. 
Mediocre. Poor. Is this a rhythm game, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it, though? Isn't all of life just a rhythm game? Especially comedy podcasts. Mm-hmm. Once again, poor, poor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, oh, so uh, Rock and Sorceress Lady had some had some time together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I've heard people discuss like how, in, like at least in the last like ten years, like you just don't ever see the Rock. Like of all the action stars, he's never in a like sexual relationship. He's always a father, a divorced father, or, like widow or something like that. And it's like part mm. of like how to make him appeal. So it's like weird seeing him now, like. Sexual, hmm. you're right. Entity. Thinking about huh. him, like obvi- I think like his his biggest recent roles obviously are is as um, Hobbs in the Fast and the Furious yeah. movies, and yeah, he is he has um, a he female agents he works Shaw. with, but he has yeah, but he has no uh, relationship with any of them other than with his daughter. And you know he's the 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 single father and and such like that. But yeah, that's that is a good point. I had not thought about that. Yeah, I can't remember where it's. I can't remember <laughs> if I read it or if it was just all like on a somebody talking about it. But it was something where like it just it's something to probably make him more like mass market appealing. Just like not you just don't see him as anything other than his mm-hmm. actions. Put you don't see him as a sexual being. Right. Hmm. Yeah, that's... I believe it. That that very much is different. Fucking, like, I am obsessed with Michael Clark Duncan and just his <laughs> monstrous build. <laughs> How's that uh, garage gym going for you, Ryan? Oh, on and off, on and off. I've only worked out, I think, twice in the last two weeks, which is really, f- but going well overall. Glad That's I got good. it. That's good. And it gets hard when the weather gets shitty. Yeah, I have some space heaters out there on a timer. Um, just some little electric ones. It's working out okay. We're back to Memnon's Palace. Got some belly dancers. For the big ass feast. Mm-hmm. Nobody it's eating till the douche says so. <laughs> I remember getting together with friends and people of relations <laughs> and eating. Liar. Oh god, you guys, I can't wait. Battle. People are going to need to crowbar me off of my friends. Uh, <laughs> just mm-hmm. from hugging everybody once we can finally do it again. So the uh, the, the soldiers are um, a little uneasy that they haven't seen the sorceress in a while. Yeah, yeah, there is. No. This character talking to Memnon being like, hey, where's your sorceress? His his character's name is Doubting General. <laughs> uh, any name with an... Yeah, if your character name has an adjective in it, you're probably having to get in SAG uh, minimum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. <laughs> My lord! She hath returned! I mean... It's a ballsy move from an unnamed character, from an otherwise unnamed character. Mm. I would say to be in like, hey, yeah, you need to uh, the men put up or talking. shut up. <laughs> yeah. Is that the outfit she left? And I, I, it's an interesting design choice to have men, men that are in hats that are so large that they literally go down to their belt buckles, but women can't mm. find pants. Right. <laughs> uh, to answer your question, Rush. Ross, I called. Okay, I guess I can't speak a, today. Uh, I think that is the same okay. outfit. Yes. Okay. Hard to say because, she, like, and a costume change somehow on the horseback. <laughs> it's, yeah, hard to say because I mean she was in the bath and then there was just like a a jacket or something. I don't know. All right, another. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, recognize this guy? E Honda. That's him. Oh wow! It's yeah, like, it is E Honda. Yep. Yeah, good work. Right. So when I first when I was watching this, I saw him like Detsy Honda, and I looked up like, <laughs> Scorpion King IMDb. He yep. wasn't there on like the main cast list, and I'm like, I know it's him. 
Someone yep. back to Street Fighter found him. <laughs> there it is. There sure it is. Yeah, man. Scorpion King and him. <laughs> That's really funny. Thunk. Getting punched by Michael Clark Duncan has to be like putting your face at the bottom of a log chute. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's very colorful. I like it. Mm-hmm. A comedic shot from the Twin Peaks opening. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Thunk, thunk. Ar- Arrows, whose penetration is always plot convenient. Yes. Mm-hmm. They'll go through metal, but not wood. <laughs> well, it makes sense. Metal's a lot thinner in armor perspectives. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit using science. <laughs> yeah, idiot. I can't stop. <laughs> Dude, sorcerer his ass. I mean, I know it's gone now, but still, though. Yeah. Unicorns are not approaching her. <laughs> <laughs> so, a doubting general is now just general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> He's apologetic general. Apologetic general. He is now dead general. Ah, deceased yeah. general. <laughs> <laughs> Former general. <laughs> Why do you ruin was food like that? Yeah, just touche move. Yeah, if this if this this yeah if this feast is being canceled, I'm 100 percent taking that fruit platter back to my mm-hmm. room. <laughs> so we got the the rock and company have successfully just about infiltrated this wall. walls. Yeah, repelling. I want to see more camels in movies. Mm. All right. So everyone's first, yeah, first mummy one movie had it. So yeah. Oh yeah, the Hamanaptra. <laughs> the little kid has stowed away. Yeah. Stay in the wagon. <laughs> okay, that's so... funny. Yeah, Michael Clark Duncan has like the most obnoxiously old lady blue eyeshadow on as his disguise as a <laughs> harem girl. I am Which really works for the comedic effect. I yeah. really appreciate that that uh, Arik Bana gets his comeuppance here real soon. <laughs> yeah, and that's a pretty, it's a pretty good one. Like, yeah, it is. It's not like anything special, but like it's just done perfect. Yeah, you're like, yep, okay, I'm good with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're both good. So, <laughs> Memnon is clearly suspicious of uh, the sorceress's reasons for returning. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is not terrible character. Like, it's not stupid. Mm-hmm. He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Is her necklace just like? Hieroglyphics? Like hieroglyphic alphabets? I think so. It's the equivalent of a juicy necklace. Yeah, oh, say, yeah. Like these days would just be random like words, yeah. It's just as juicy love. <laughs> Thick with two C's. Mm. This is a cool test. I actually yeah. thought this was neat. This is this above is... the rest of this movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, this is Flash Gordon with Timothy Dalton. Same with him with <laughs> mm-hmm. the tree trunk. Yeah. Yep. So here we have uh, two guards taking marshmallow roasters and putting cobras into pots. Shit. Mm-hmm. For uh, Egyptian roulette, I think this game is called. Hey, there it is. They even, I mean, they even keep it to six pots. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, depending on how many beers I've drank, I probably could do this game. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Max, we hardly knew ye. Yeah. I wouldn't... Going out... It's a, me- Going out... Uh, eh, yeah. a yeah. mediocre death. Not a bad one, not a good one, though. I, I mean, I think poison running through your veins is a pretty awful way to go. I meant, like, I grabbed a snake, and the snake bit me. <laughs> that's but But that's not... The end of it. Eh, eh, <laughs> eh. That's that's the but that's that's the story my problem that if on. I get in that situation. <laughs> I'm at now now. 
Is it then now? <laughs> Soon. Soon. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So they've got uh, actually quite a few people have snuck in. Like they've got Jesus, like a dozen people maybe. It seems almost. They've got wagon space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wagon space. And this is where Michael Clark Duncan simply lifts the entire temple. <laughs> yeah. You can tell he's like not even trying. He's just like, all right, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a face that looks like I'm working, but I'm actually. Not working at all. There's a fair chance that man could flip most small cars on his own. Yes. <laughs> yes. Aha! We got the lady warriors in here just doing work. Yep. Dropping guards. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really stupid, but yeah. I appreciate the guy just getting pelted by bags. <laughs> Packs of explosive powder. <laughs> yeah. See, look, the, 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 the urns aren't even spinning that fast. I'm like owning a 9% beer before we started recording, and I totally could not grab a snake. Spinning, <laughs> like holding her hat up, hand <laughs> above each one means anything. Yeah. She's. Give me the the old the old Bobby woo woo <laughs> above all the pots. Yeah, he, he does have the douchey face of a ruler. He really does. Yeah, he, he reminds me of an actor I looked up his name to be, and I couldn't find anything that I've seen him in, and I just can't place who he reminds me of. Yeah, mm. it it is a fa a fairly generic douchiness to be sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. So I know the actor, and I can't. I don't remember his name. If you've ever seen um, uh, I can't remember the movie. Um, let me pull IMDb. Equal, okay, no, it's Equilibrium. The guy who plays Father in Equilibrium, and it's not the same actor, but he reminds me of. Oh, it's in the yeah. eyes. It's in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can see it. That's I can not... dig. No, that's not John Hurt in Equilibrium, is it? No. 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 You're thinking of like the exact same shots of him in for Vendetta. I yes, that is exactly what I am thinking of. Excellent movie, by the way. Equilibrium? Yes. I love yes. it. Yeah. That's really pretty good. Yeah. That, good movie. For a for a for a brief moment that director Kurt Wimmer was attached yeah. to directing a Metal Gear movie. Or no, maybe, and, maybe, and, the, and then yeah. he did Ultraviolet. Maybe and, yep. <laughs> I think that one's on the list. It, it is. is it, that is it has been it since is. day one. <laughs> yeah. The line from that, like, uh, what is it? Uh, what are you, mental? Was became like a quip among me and my friends for the longest time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we saw that opening weekend, much to our... We, we were very upset by that. Yeah. <laughs> Much to our chagrin. Yeah, the actor I'm thinking of is Sean Britton. Pertwee. The... Pertwee so, uh, is rock... a sufficient... Go ahead. Oh, that, now he's just got God of War armor on. Um, mm. yeah. I was going to say, Pertwee is a sufficiently British last name for yeah. being equilibrium. <laughs> So the rock suffers a uh, few wounds here at Memnon's blade. Just an excuse to take off the armor and show off the packs. <laughs> Jesus Christ. People should just be exploding into just bloody mist with Michael Clark Duncan slaying them like this. <laughs> yes. It's like Yakuza games, except instead of money, they just explode into blood. Yo, oh, God. <laughs> Oof. So what'd you call this guy? Aaron Banna? Arik Banna. Oh, Arik Banna? Yeah. <laughs> I like to call him Eric Banna. <laughs> snakes! Why does it have to be snakes? <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> thanks. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, this movie does 
take a little bit from Indiana Jones, right? Let's oh, yeah. See. The little kid's yeah. a bit of a short round kind of deal for a moment. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. the henchmen for this guy look exactly like the um yeah, the yeah. oh yeah from for sure. uh, Last Crusade, right? Yeah, almost ah. definitely, almost definitely. On and Thanksgiving, we'll, we'll... I was hanging out with my family because they're in my pod or whatever, and we watched uh, Raiders. As my, I don't think my sister's boyfriend had seen it. I don't think my sister had either. So. Oh, you know, very enjoyable. Oh. How can you not see the Raiders? Oh. So, knocking all sorts of furniture over, starting fires in the, the room here. Oh, it's, Ooh, it's not the Palace it's Guard. Years, it's the movie where it's technically that fire. Oh, it the is CGI. the Palace Guard, but it's also a uh, MTD. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah, because you're like, there's no way that door got pushed open with a with the bar on there, and then Michael Clark Duncan comes through with men all over him, and he's like, okay, yep, that yeah, that, yeah, yeah it believable. Out. Door never stood <laughs> yeah, a chance. Got it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all sorts of havoc in here now. This this is a decently choreographed fight scene. I yeah, like it. yeah. The one thing I don't believe is the Rock is gonna throw that brazier stand. A brazier stand in like 30 <laughs> seconds right. and it knocks over like seven guys and i'm just like i don't think so <laughs> other than that yeah very good mm. so memnon has captured the sorceress a thunk thunk double yeah, brazier I the thunk yeah there yeah. it is yeah, yeah. good uh... <laughs> yeah they're like i've been assaulted with by an ikea stand yes <laughs> That's a cool shot. Yeah, there, there's a cool shot coming up, which we're about we're about to see of uh, Memnon the Sorceress. We're taken through a curtain, and then a flaming curtain came down, and now uh, the Rock is pursuing them. And there's a flaming curtain, so he throws the sword forward, and then separates the curtain and jumps through it, which is yeah. a very cool looking shot. Yeah, that's a yeah. cool shot. Agree. Ah, definitely. Who put this Rock shot. here? <laughs> Just a rock on the table. So here we, here we go. All men are a chaos. <laughs> yep. It just no chance so, at all. Yeah. So Arik <laughs> Ben I guess dismounted by my by MCD and then killed with a very primitive looking halberd. Just immediately. Yep. yep. Right through the throat. It's satisfying. Haha, -ha, good work, Tattoo or Tatu or Tutu. Speaking Aladdin. of throat, his name is Aladdin. <laughs> did you did you see that the center for the Lions played almost the entire last game with a broken throat? <laughs> what? Yeah, Bruh. he he apparently broke his throat mid game and then just played through it. And this week they're like, he he might he might not play this week. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. This week. What? <laughs> How do you break a throat? Designation. I don't, I don't know. I didn't know so, that that could break. Me neither. So these flaming swords were featured prominently in the trailers for this movie. Yeah. They're cool. They look really yeah, good. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah, it does. They're actually ah. flaming swords, not CGI mm -hmm. or anything. Yep. Set alight by the finest olive oil that conquering can produce. <laughs> yeah. we'll I remember up. that Flip. WWE move of the rock yeah. being on his back, then flipping up. Yeah, kip up is what it's called. I mean, most wrestlers can do kip that. Up, the, kip the up. Big Show can do that. A 500 pound guy. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, that was back when I think when he was like a slimmer 400 pounds. But yeah. They were billing him as 500. At one point, yeah, definitely. Oh, now we're seeing uh, the the, uh, the vision. Yeah, the, the vision coming to fruition here. Yep. And the sorceress is like, "Oh, déjà vu." <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what she said, and that's exactly how she sounded. Yes, déjà vu <laughs> is what COVID deniers say they have when they have COVID, survive, and then somehow get COVID again. Uh, like Bolsonaro. Yeah. And, yep. And the rock takes an arrow to the back, just as predicted. Yep. 
Except it doesn't quite look the same as her vision. Mm, so maybe the different. outcome will be different. Mm. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Arpin's like, yeah, you like this shit. Yeah. How did these guys sneak in here? I don't know. They're motivated. So they're motivated. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have no argument to that. Yeah. <laughs> is op is um shit. Uh I can't think of the scientific term, but the opposite of the amount. Um so the more mooks you have, the less effective they are in combat. Oh, inverse? inverse? Inverse, yes, inverse, yeah. The effectiveness of mooks in combat is inverse to the amount, but the stealthiness of mooks is proportional to the amount of mooks you have. Yes. <laughs> okay. See also Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Now seems like a good time to stop for a snack. Yeah. You got to get those... Uh, you gotta recover that HP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rock's gotta get himself some electrolytes <laughs> before he can finish this battle. He can't snap into a slim gym. <laughs> That's just... Dude, just Macho Man Randy Savage is a villain aside from Bone Saw. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So here's where we get the the flashback to. He'll always have the blood of the scorpion in him. Could you imagine the pain? Of drawing back a bow with that heavy of a draw with a shoulder wound. <laughs> It'd be just awful. Yeah. Ryan, as someone who has had a shoulder uh, surgery, I can imagine you can relate. Uh, not a fan. Not a fan of thinking about it. Not a fan of shoulders. Yeah, and it's something it, I bro. think we, yeah, I think we <laughs> talked over it earlier, but um, uh, Arik Bana had the rock's bow and like he tries to draw it back and can't <laughs> yeah 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 and it, it's a nice shot there that you know we saw uh, um memnoth catch the bow catch the arrow beforehand and this time like he can't because it's so quick but also he just gets blasted backwards by it right yep. and now he everything's gone. exploding yep he's gone yeah you have to admire a movie that can end in an explosion thousands of years before gunpowder existed <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. After the the crazy scientist guy blew up the Death Star equivalent weak point of the temple. Yeah. Yes. After yeah, after Theoden King takes down Temple Memnoth. <laughs> you keep what you well, kill. Damn it! Wrong movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the the subjects are now kneeling subjects. before the rock. <laughs> Woo! Just happy to be wrapping this one up just about. Yeah. Even rocking this one up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a Boris Vallejo shot if I've ever seen one. Hmm. Yeah. Too many clothes on that lady for it to be a, a Vallejo shot. True, nice. true. <laughs> I had a, a couple of year, years ago, I must have been in high school, I got a Boris Vallejo uh, calendar from my, uh, from my aunt for Christmas. Oh. One of my cooler aunts. Yeah. Definitely, definitely became cooler after that gift, I'm sure. Yeah. Always has been, always will be the cool aunt. <laughs> That's the one who, um, a couple days for my birthday, she's like, "Oh, I'm I'm sending you a plant in the mail. Want to make sure you get it? Cause I don't want to I don't want to have the cold get to it." I'm like, "Are you mailing me a weed plant?" Yeah. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> cooler if you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there an umpire behind him? No. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like it. <laughs> Talk about anachronistic. Yeah. That's right. Throw it onto the pile. Chain mail, gunpowder, catapults. Yeah, sorceress lady, don't you lose your powers if you, you know, boink a boy? You diddle a man? 
If you flip Mine over a rock. rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that line that nothing lasts forever, my king. As like, um, you know, we, we know as viewers of Mummy Returns that he eventually will die, to, uh, you know, fail at his ultimate quest, I guess. Also that he is king of the city Gamora, which, you know, <laughs> yeah. any... Like, uh, what's that about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seems fine. <laughs> Everything's yeah. fine. They're both. I would say everyone in the Western world kind of knows the reputation of that place. So, oh, yeah. thanks, Chuck Smack. Yep. Yeah. Oh, David Hayter. There we go. Interesting. Yeah, solid so, snake yeah. himself. Yep. Steven Summers. Interesting. He also did the script for the first X Men movie. That I know. Uh, yeah, I did yeah. know that. Yeah. Executive producer Vince McMahon. <laughs> yeah, I was reading on that. Apparently, it had to be that because. He, he uh, is billed as The Rock. Um, if he was billed as Dwayne uh, Johnson, it'd be fine. But because Vince McMahon, WWE owned the name The Rock, uh, if he had so a yeah, movie he... as The Rock, he's got to be executive producer. Okay, because yeah, for the longest time he was The Rock. Then it was Dwayne The Rock the Johnson, Rock. and now it's just yeah. Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I don't think uh, Universal would let him, ha- uh, Vince McMahon, have some of the Fast and Furious profits. <laughs> No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, Absolutely but... not on that one. Uh, yeah. Man, this is 18 years ago. Yeah. Shit. Woo. All right. So let's move on to View Again, Brew Again. Would we watch this movie again? Would we drink these beers again? Uh, Russ, why don't you start us off? Um. So View Again... Uh... I'm gonna say probably yeah. Uh, I actually own this movie before you guys told me uh, watch it, but I didn't. I've never watched it before. I'm uh, I buy a lot of digital movies because I always assume the worst is gonna happen as far as needing to be bored. Uh, that bored. Um, so I probably bought this on sale at some point on iTunes or if we do or something. Um, I didn't mind this so much. It definitely is more a Conan movie than it is uh, a Mummy movie, uh, which I'm fine with because the conan movies are the only like sword and sandals like this or like conan the barbarian destroyer or red sonia um but it definitely wouldn't be a like oh i'm gonna watch this tomorrow uh this will be like yeah. <laughs> i'll come back to it maybe in a couple years if i'm bored um and as far as uh Bruggen, um as far the mad elf grand crew actually I, I liked it quite a bit more than the regular mad elf um it was a lot less uh sweet and like that, which can be overpowering normal Mad Elf. Um, the spice notes in it uh, are a lot better, and which uh, um, I, so I was looking at that I can here too is my backup of regular Mad Elf, and I was I forgot that regular Mad Elf is eleven percent too. Uh, and I thought this was gonna <laughs> this, and this one is the Grand Crew is eleven percent. Um, so I'd maybe get it again. Um, so this is the, the twenty nineteen bomber that I've been sitting on. So I know there's another round of twenty twenty bombers. So maybe I'll pick one up. Right on, right on. Yeah. Uh, I'll go next. So, view again. Yes, I I think this is maybe one that's uh best viewed with a watch party or group viewing, kind of like what we've been doing. Um, yeah. and and definitely, if I was going to be uh, going through the entire film series, um, I I think it'd be fun just to kind of see like. All right, here's where it started, and where does it where does it eventually end up? I didn't dislike it as much as I anticipated. I mean, it's fine. You can see a lot of The Rock's or Dwayne Johnson's um, future work based off of what's what's in this movie, as far as his athleticism, his comedy chops, his uh, acting pr- prowess with children and stuff like that. So it's it's fine. It's uh, like 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 you were saying, Russ. It it works pretty well. It's, it's kind of just like a a standalone kind of kind of Conan esque story of a of a, a warrior becoming a king and stuff like that. So it's, it's only ninety minutes, but I it, the movie feels like it's always moving towards something. Like it doesn't really plot on. It it's always moving towards that eventual conclusion and fight between um, Memnoth and uh, Matthias. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, I, I I think it's great for doing that. In, a, in an era where it easily could have been a two-hour movie. For the brew again, yes, I did not comment about this really at all while I was drinking it because it was just it was very, very good. 
but the Flying Buffalo Cherry Cordial from Griffin Claw, very, very tasty. Uh, at, at 12% ABV, you would not think it was that boozy just based off of just based off drinking it. It might be because of the sweetness of these um, Michigan cherries, but I I very much enjoyed it. Uh, a little bit of chocolate notes to it. I'm more a fan of, of the darker chocolate, so it could be just a little more bitter, and I think it would be a, a definite, like, you know, five out of five stars. But this was very, very enjoyable. I'm glad I, I'm glad I picked this one up. I'm interested to see what else goes on um, from the other variants of this uh, series. Definitely want to check out more of them. I feel like with everything that's been going on this year, a lot of these rare releases or, or limited releases are actually a little more accessible. As far as like this beer came out a couple months ago, but I was still able to find it as, as a one-off on the shelf. And if anything, that's a positive aspect of 2020, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So I'll take it. I'll take that. Uh, Ryan. Uh, okay, Max, had you not seen this prior to watching it for the podcast? I had not. No. Oh, all right. I cool. have a copy of Mummy Returns on DVD that mm. I got when I was fourteen, thirteen, something like that. So, Ugh. but I had I I had never actually seen this one. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm just curious. Um, but, but, but I'll start with brew again. Uh, I just had the one beer tonight, the the Central Waters uh, Bourbon Barrel Stout, and uh, this was just really really excellent um i think this is a great example of a beer that's not trying to do too much but what it does does really well um i this is one of the best uh balances of bourbon barrel flavor i've had i think in a stout um this is just really really good and it drinks really nicely super tasty um uh, once again central water is just not disappointing yeah, I've I've had a couple of beers from them, and they're I think that that is a great description of the breweries. It's uh, doing a lot with not a lot. Yeah, I yeah, guess. for sure, absolutely. Um, I, I was introduced to these guys via Mr. Steve Cuff, so thank you, Steve. Um, uh, view again. I mean, yeah, I, I would. I <laughs> honestly, I think I w I like this movie watching it now more than I did when I first saw it when it came out. Um, it's just, it's completely silly. Like, this movie is just ridiculous. It's its decently family fair, too, overall. I mean, there's not a lot of objectionable stuff here that you can't really just sit down and watch with most ages of people. Like, if you want to just a uh, silly, shut your brain off kind of action movie. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, I would rather watch so much more stuff than this movie. But I, I don't hate it. Um, it's it's fine. I would watch it again, yes, but I would just rather not. <laughs> I would rather watch something else. Yeah, I guess that's kind of where I land on it. <laughs> All right, bring us home, antiquities expert. Uh, yeah, this is uh the movie is unremarkable. That is the word that I would use, Ryan. Sure. Mm, um, yeah. It it and I'm not gonna pick on it too much for that. Like, it's it's the Rock's real first foray, and he does a right. fine job, right? I mean, it's this is. This is a good made for TV movie or like direct yeah. to direct video movie. It's it's good. Um it doesn't do anything offensive besides ants. Um <laughs> but ants. It, it, it's there. I, I agree with you, Ryan. Like I'm not gonna I don't hate this movie, but there is no point of, upon which I'll ever be like, you know what I would want watch wanna watch instead of literally anything else? <laughs> a Scorpion King. So and to the to the uh beer this is really good i'm very much enjoying this i don't i've never had city built brewing company before max and i've been to grand rapids quite a lot so i'll have to go check them out i thought they were up in like traverse city area but i, I could be wrong grand rapids michigan 820 oh. monroe avenue northwest never mind then mm. so I yeah michigan breweries oh. there's so <laughs> many breweries here that said have you managed to get a hold of the uh the hershey's chocolate uh, Yingling at all? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, actually, oddly, the I was the one breach of quarantine we did was to visit Amanda's uh, parents down in um, North Carolina, and we when we were at Total Wine and More down there, they had it there, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where I got it. Um, I could have probably got it during quarantine. It's been a, a weird thing because my wife's been doing all the grocery shopping, and she, it's you know hectic enough. So I, I'm like, you know what? Don't I'm, don't worry about beer for me. 
uh, when you're there, just get in and out, get your stuff as fast as possible. Yeah. So I've mostly been ordering beer for delivery. Um, particularly because of Pennsylvania's weird beer laws. So Yeah, we, but like we've had like, and it's, I, I, I was talking with my friends from Michigan and when I was explaining some of the stuff, he's like, wait, you guys are kind of ahead of a, uh, ahead of things in Michigan. And I'm like, really? We are? Because like, we've got places that do statewide shipping. We got like, there's like 30 Pennsylvania breweries that do sh- statewide shipping. Um, okay. And there's some that do local, like, um, just courier stuff. So like the, the, there's one that opened near me, um, Attic Brewing Company, which is a really good one. Um, which I don't want to get too specific because no, if I say the Germantown section of Philadelphia, most people are probably going to be like, what? Um, <laughs> but uh, they're a smaller one. They actually just uh, got a bronze medal for their brown at um, the World Beer Festival brewery. or whatever. Yeah, well, or American Beer uh, oh. beer Fest. But um, it was, uh, you know, and they're a, a year old brewery. Um, so they opened up right before COVID. Nice. Uh, but they do, they do, from the beginning of COVID, they've done, if you're within, you know, and I'm, I'm within a mile of them. And they're like, if you're within five miles, it's no shipping charge. Um, you put the order in and just, on their sh- the, at first it started when things were at its worst um five days of the week the day you put it in within like two hours you'd have a bunch of beer on your doorstep nice, um, nice. as awesome. things as things started getting better and they're like there's less of an excuse for doing it they start rolling it back to one day a week and now they're rolling it back to at least in my for me five days a week uh some ar- other areas further away it's like you have an assigned day like so they'll handle like the northeast section of the city on friday and they'll handle south philly on saturdays um but for me and since i'm just a mile from them it's five days a week and just one order in and i'll have it with somewhere between the two to four window of that day that's awesome that's yeah that's, <laughs> that's great there's a couple of breweries around us that are kind of doing that as well and i've i, I definitely know some other breweries within at least like uh ontario and surrounding states are, are doing similar things like that so but I, again because United States is backwards in a lot of ways that it varies yeah. state by state as far as Oh yeah, it's definitely and it's only doable. you can only get you can only get in state. So it's if you were on the other side of the river in Jersey, you'd be out of luck for Pennsylvania ones. And there's even um distilleries here in Pennsylvania you can get to your door delivery even though like before all of this the only place here in the state you could buy liquor at all was at state run stores. Right, but as soon but as soon as they're like, oh yeah, you can get the only only places the distilleries here in Pennsylvania will ship to is Pennsylvania and District of Columbia. I don't know why DC is exempt, but they are because they're. <laughs> um, I think it's because they're they're not a state. They're yeah, a yeah, no, I, I, right, right. So I don't know the practicality. I, I guess I should say more. I don't know the practicality of it. Like why, like how much more expensive it would be to ship to DC than somewhere in the, uh in, within state. But it's it, and that's what I did too. Like whenever I needed liquor in the first few months, because the state stores were closed. I would just order from a distillery, and oh, I get this, you know, big package of happiness. If you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a box of cheer, yeah. Yep. Ho ho ho! <laughs> yeah, we our laws are getting our, you know, I mean, now people actually probably know our governor's name, Tom Wolf. After all, between he was one of the, you know, just like Whitmer, Whitmer, he was one of the few who got the attention, uh, national attention for, mm. you know. We gotta right. shut him down uh, from a certain individual, and uh, also like um, your you know, your lieutenant governor state results. Oh well, yes, <laughs> Who looks like Shao is, He looks like he could headbutt somebody's skull through the back of their like head. Yeah. Um, he. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, Wolf was. Uh, he's fought hard to. That was one of the things he's talked about. Is he's tried to push back our archaic liquor laws. Yeah, because Pen- Pennsylvania's liquor laws or or beer laws are are very very similar to um, Canada. Uh, I, I, excuse me, Ontario's as as far as yeah. everything's is through a a, a state run. Um, yeah, liquor is still that wine. During his administration, has moved to that you can at uh, grocery stores that have a uh, some sort of like uh, diner section, you can get wine. And that before he came into place, that was how beer was. Like uh, since I've been here, beer you could get if it, if the grocery store has a cafeteria or ca- like a, a small like you know hot food section, you could buy beer there and that small section of it. Um, so he added wine to that. So I bet maybe in a few years liquor will be added to that, but we'll see. Hmm. Well, here's the hoping. <laughs> All right, so I think that's everyone. I'm not skipping over every. I'm not skipping over anyone on their views on this movies and there's beers. So 
All right. So, Russ, you have the pleasure, I guess, of being <laughs> the first guest we've had who yeah. has a kid. Yeah, so you, yeah. uh, I think since you've come on, uh, you've had a daughter, um, Matilda, yeah. and um, just out of, out of curiosity, how have your viewing choices changed? I guess, like, do, do you because your daughter is still, still so young, are you still yeah. just watching whatever, or no, no, no? Well, not when she's around. Um, so let's see. So just give everyone a frame of reference. You know, she was born in February of 2019, um, and so you know she's at 20 just about to be at 22 months and um it's she's much more cognizant now of like what you know she's aware of the tv um during the first few months she was um around um you know you have the tv on she wouldn't know what's going on there you learn a lot about this stuff like when you read on it like what they can what they're aware of and things like that and so mm. like i think the first movie she technically like was in the presence of was batman 89 um because that was just good <laughs> i just felt like watching that one day and she was just like fell asleep in my arms watching that she was probably like two months old um <clears throat> but like dancing to party man <laughs> no, at that point no she could not move much um <laughs> i th yes. you know if for for the first, you know, like year or so, you could kind of have the TV on the background. She wouldn't be too aware of it. She would kind of see colors and things like that and hear sounds and but wouldn't be too concerned. There was a stretch there, like just right before her first birthday, where she was homesick because there was a neurovirus going through the daycare, which Ooh. was fun. Yeah, no, that was a whole wonderful. I'll just say this uh, for any future parents, if you ever want to be prepared for the amount of bodily excrement you're going to have to deal with. Take a job in as a teenager in fast food and have to clean up bathrooms there, and you'll be okay Oof. with it. Because um, that, that was my training, and my, but my wife doesn't have anything like that. So I, I've, become, I've become far more comfortable with handling the worst because of those <laughs> wonderful formative years at Burger King cleaning up bathrooms. Um, anyways, uh, but when she was home then, um, so this was around 11 months, uh, she, I could put a movie on, and she would actually be super enthralled by that. So like, and she really liked things with like puppets and stuff like that. So we watched like Labyrinth and um, Ooh, nice. the the Muppet movie, and she would be like super nice. into it because it was a nice combination of music and um, uh, puppets and stuff like that. And she would dance to it. Now a little bit later, she doesn't have the attention span for movies. She's much more. She's really she likes YouTube stuff. So I'll have to throw on like kids YouTube things, and she'll be very demanding about what she wants to watch. Um, she <laughs> kind of vocalize what she wants to watch. Like she has this favorite channel called Pancake Manor, which is a puppet <laughs> one out of Canada. Um, and she'll get in your face and demand pancake. Um, <laughs> and but then if it's the wrong one, she'll like no, no, and like it's try wrong. to like vocalize to you what it is. So like, if she wants a specific one, she'll catch a word from it and tells you. Down the road, I think that's you know we'll hopefully get her to movies. Uh, obviously. I'm excited to take her to the movies. And by the time I, I was imagining before COVID three years old, kind of where maybe, you know, maybe late twos would possibly be the first screening of like a kid, you know, obviously a kid's movie. I, I would never take her to like a Marvel. <laughs> like I knew, I knew people who would take, you know, their kid, their, their toddlers to a PG 13 or later movies. And I'm not going to mm. be that parent. Um, yeah. We, we, we collectively hate those people. Of course. <laughs> of course. They're the, the worst. Um, I mean, I've I've been in our movies with literal infants there, and then it's not that you're taking your kids to the movie; it's just you didn't want to get a babysitter. Right. Um, and but you know, I was looking forward to taking her kids movies. I mean, I remember just a few uh, back when uh, the Lego Movie came out. Me and my wife went and saw it because we liked the, a lot of the voice talent in it, and we just saw it's it like hysterical. Right, we think, <laughs> yes. well, it, it's and it is hysterical, and we didn't think though about what we were doing about going to a kids movie. An opening night. Um, <laughs> I wish you could see my eyes just how wide they got. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was kids were running up and down the aisles, and we joked about how that was, you know, birth control in uh, we, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it was just you were like, oh my god, this, you know, it is a different experience when it's a kids movie like that, an opening night. You know, it's just it's an out of control thing, and you just all the parents there are fine with that because they're not there to they don't care about the movie. It's just there You're to right. take it in. And we were we were honestly fine with it because the kids were having fun with it um, that were there. So that's the kind of thing I can imagine, you know, when she's a little bit older and by then 
you know, we're still over a year away from that time frame anyways. So in my head, I'm assuming the world will be back to normal by then. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the first movie going experience. It's probably going to be my thing because I'm much more the movie theater person. I love going to theaters. My wife likes seeing the movies there, but she doesn't necessarily get excited about the movie theater experience like I do. Gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll see. But, you know, and I, I, in my head, I've got a f movies we're gonna, that she's going to have to see. Uh, before, yeah, uh, well, then, you know, uh, that's, that's kind of my next question. What are those uh, movies that you want to show Matilda that you hope that, you know, she will glom onto, I guess? Yeah, I mean, like, just the other night we watched uh, Muppet Christmas Carol, um, same thing, and it was really nice watching her really, like, she was dancing along to the music, and, and like, on Star Wars Day this year, we watched Star Wars, and as much as she didn't really quite get much from it, but, like, yeah, there's certainly movies. I, I know it's a fool's errand to try and have her have the same taste of the movie as me, and, you know, if she does, she does. You know, me and my wife have very different tastes in movies. <laughs> um... <laughs> So she, you know, she could come to me and be like, "Oh, let's watch Jane Eyre again." Um, and I, <laughs> I would, know this feeling well. <laughs> yeah, and it is what it is. Jane Eyre. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be the. I guess that had to be my follow-up question. Um, or not? You know, and just that, like I, I have a stronger connection to children's in general because when I was in uh, my PhD program, I took a course on that involved studying animation and i've written papers on children's animation so like i've watched a lot of cartoons um and i enjoy cartoons still as an adult very thoroughly Same. so like i think we'd have a lot to talk about russ i think we yeah. have a lot to talk about <laughs> um <laughs> so like you know i mean she can watch you know like i try to when she's old enough watch like iron giant with her and hopefully she's okay with me crying um mm -hmm. <laughs> We'll go back, you know, we've watched like a few Pixar things and so like that. Um, you know, I, I have a, I, I don't know if I would ever try to show her like the live action things I grew up as a kid. Those are not quite as timeless as animation tends to be. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't think I'm going to have her watch Suburban Commando, uh, going back to our prior <laughs> uh, <laughs> mention of it. But, you know, what it's, about yeah. What about No Holds Barred? <laughs> I mean, or she has to with muscles. With <laughs> yeah, well... Stands with muscle. I mean, once we get to the Christmas season again, that might be acceptable. I no holds barred. She has to watch to know what what Dookie is, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, we're gonna see how it goes. Like right now, I mean, part of the thing right now is, um, based on what we read, we try to keep her to on most days, uh, half hour to an hour of screen time. I mean, it's everything we read saying it's kind of important for Kanye, even though I was raised on as much TV as I wanted, and I'm pretty sure that did some irreparable damage. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all been that? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I, I know, I know. Um, like, you know, day to day, she, she was home today because of the snow day. She'll be home today tomorrow. Probably gonna watch a little bit more TV than an hour. I know that you and Amanda, you know, are doing your best for uh, your daughter, and it's, it, is, it is very commendable in, in this current day and age. But on to something a little bit Less serious now. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's parenting's not too serious. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. If you don't mind it, yeah. No, it, if you just have there, are, there are fun, fun enough fun moments with it that it, it can be good. So, <laughs> okay. But, so, yeah. honestly, thing a little, little uh, less serious. So, you did a lot of homework for this episode. You watched uh, Mummy and the Mummy Returns. Which... Yeah, I watched two movies. Let's. <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> well, you know. But what did That's... it cost? What did it yeah. cost, Russ? What did it cost you? Okay. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I think the first Mummy movie is a great movie. It's a the, ton the... of fun. Yeah, yeah it is. It, it is a really fun movie. It is. I mean, yeah. you guys have extolled on Brendan and Fraser in, in past episodes, so that. I really like uh, Rachel Weisz. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember the actor's name, the guy who plays Benny in that. That character... Oh, he's so the, good. One, that is That is... an archetypal characters um, yeah he's in a lot of stephen summers movie i cannot recall the actor's yeah, name um, he plays right igor and uh van helsing um yeah, and a few other things but like that character like has stuck with me all these years later that first movie is even though the special effects in there are just like in all the other one of these 
are way more ambitious than they had the technology for. <laughs> um, like those first few shots of the mummy when he's just like the rotting skin walking around look like garbage. And like once you know, once you get to the point where it's mostly uh, Arnold Vuzlu, whatever, with the effects on him, like those look fine. And some of the other things where it's like the sandstorm with his face, those look fine. But those first few shots are just crap. <laughs> so. Uh, just real quickly, that actor's name is uh, Kevin J. O'Connor. Yeah. Uh, this guy who and, plays Benny. Um, yeah. What did I watch him in recently, too? Oh, Virtuosity. Oh, that's right. Really? Um, Interesting. Yeah. He does not look like he used to. Yeah. he uh, He's a good character actor. Um, and then everybody in that movie is... There's some really like fun performances in that movie all around. The second movie has a lot of issues, and... So wait, now let me ask a question, Max. When you were in the, when you first came to Tech, were you living in the dorms? Yes. Did they still have the movie channel going? Um. So it used to be I'll... when I first came in the dorms, there was a, a dedicated movie channel on the cable system in the dorms that would show movies in that gap from when they left theaters before they went to home video. And in fact, a, a whim to a WMT alum, Struthers, uh, was at one point a programmer of it. And when I first moved into the dorms, it was right in that gap for The Mummy Returns. So because this was a new novelty to us, that there was this channel of things before they were out in home video, I watched The Mummy Returns probably like 30 times. Mm. Uh, and it's and it's terrible. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not worth something you want to watch 30 times, I should say. <laughs> um, it's maybe not terrible is the right word, but um, that's also the same problem. I mean, we talked about the the special effect of The Scorpion King. That uh, It's so bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> It reminds me of in Army of Darkness. There's that part where um, Bad Ash starts sprouting from uh, Good Ash. Oh yeah. And they, mm -hmm. they're using they're using all the proper practical effects that Sam Raimi could afford. But it's at one point it's literally just Bruce Campbell with a dummy attached to him. Ugh. And the Scorpion King effect reminds me of because like the top half has no motion to it, the human part, the rock part. So it's just like animated scorpion legs with a dummy attached to it of the yeah. rock. Like, oh. mm -hmm. And he looks like <sighs> cheap plastic. <laughs> and it also has the um, one of the worst examples of, the, of a Moppet, you know, like a child actor that's just really... I know you guys don't like to harp on child actors. <laughs> it can be appropriate sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I mean, it, it's, it feels like easy picking a lot of times, but... Um, I read your little uh, review of Mummy Returns yeah. on uh, yeah. your letterbox, and I'm like, okay, yeah. yeah, yep, this all this all makes sense. Yeah, no, it's he's he's everything that you can imagine. Like a you know, he's he thinks he's overly clever. The plot hinges around him, even the, and like, there's also this element too where like you find out that Brendan Fraser was secretly one of the magi, the you know enforces from the first film and the Rachel Weiss's character was secretly Nefertiti reincarnated like why wasn't any of this like even hinted at in the first film of course <laughs> because they didn't have any plan for that mm -hmm. yeah and it's you know watching this movie there's no connection between these the mummy returns and scorpion king like it's the movie the mummy returns begins with a voiceover narration by that head magi guy talking about the legend of the scorpion king and by that point, it's supposed to be well after this. He's leading this army, I'm guessing, of the army of Gamora. Uh, so it's none of what has in this has any bearing on it. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Because it's, like, I I think that narration is, like, after a seven-year campaign and such like mm -hmm. that. And, yep. yeah, it's... It, yeah, like, no, it, it, it just it just feels very disjointed. Like the only character who has any consistency between the first and second movies is Jonathan. The uh, doofus brother of Evie, yeah. whose actor portrayal I cannot recall, but he is like he is exactly the same character as in the first movie, and it's it still works on that. And he has a yeah. There's a couple callback moments to stuff he did in the first movie, which mm -hmm. you know makes sense because like he's able yeah, to translate that one uh, hieroglyph he couldn't in the first one. So. A benefit. Yep. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. No, there was a uh, somebody out here describing it like they love his his plot line through the three movies. So in the first movie, he doesn't believe in mummies. In the second movie, he's afraid of mummies. And in the third movie, he hates mummies. Um, <laughs> like, like that's character growth, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, he has the in the third movie he has the club called Imhotep, just as like yeah. as, a, as a fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched that one since uh, first came on home video, so I don't have much memory. In theory, I should have probably done it before we recorded this. Oh no, that's the should fun. I I haven't watched it in a decade either, so you know you're good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it's always this weird thing if like Universal really wants to have a universal monsters franchise like yeah mm-hmm. like or you know like they had this and then they had van helsing which was clearly trying to do the same thing and now we have i think they're calling it it's called like the dark universe and like dracula untold or oh that dracula. was so bad too and that's supposed to connect to, was supposed to have connected to the tom cruise mummy right yep. um and you know that has supposed to be like the back door pilot. It was sort of a back door to uh, um, Doctor Jekyll, and Mister Hyde, with Russell's Crow character in that. Yeah, they had a bunch of movies and directors actually lined up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they're like yeah. they did like a whole like Entertainment Weekly like. Here's what's coming. Like, article, yeah, and like and it was very like proclamative, and like the mummy bombed so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was weird because like. Looking back at those early Universal films, they had those crossovers. They just they just did them. It's like, all right, yeah, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, go. Like they didn't. <laughs> yeah. ha- I mean, it's. I mean, obviously, we're in a completely different age as far as like setting those things up. But like the way that they were billing like this dark universe or whatever, it was like, oh my gosh, this is some untrodden land. And it's like, no, you've been doing this for like seventy some years now or eighty years. You know, it's. And but, the sad thing is, a non-universal picture had the best crossover of that Monster Squad. Oh gosh, yeah, 80s. that was great, great and movie. That was not, and it wasn't even universal, like I mean, because it's all public domain, of course. But they were using obviously the universal version of that, and the only one that was kind of weird territory was the creature from the Black Lake. Like, just called it the creature, but um, mm-hmm. you know, he's always kind of been like the odd one out because it's the only uh, non- character not rooted in. Uh, I don't want to say Western mythology because it's even more West, but it's it's not rooted in the Western world in comparison yeah. with Frankenstein, Wolfman, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, so it's a you know it's it's a weird dream of theirs, and um, they well, and like I was, apparently I was as I was doing searches for this, apparently The Rock recently his company, his studio, whatever, said they're going to do another Scorpion King reboot. And there's also mentions in that that there's talk of another mummy reboot that he wants to be in, not in a Scorpion King related fashion. Huh. Yeah. So the Scorpion King reboot, after you know this movie had four sequels, is supposed to be a modern day contemporary adaptation of the character Which, of Matthias. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm, yep. Yep. No. In the Rock serving as executive producer, he will not be supposedly starring in the role, but will be yeah. you know involved. Huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I just I don't understand how it could be monster like I, I, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know I about know. that one. <laughs> yeah, you say that like there hasn't been so much like garbage connected to it. Like that, like, that one's going to be the exception of. I mean, mm-hmm. is there like I I can't even imagine what these these four straight to DVD sequels are like. I well, have, Kurt, I've uh, never Ron dove Perlman's into them. in a couple of them, and yeah. uh, Kurt Angle's in uh, at least one of them. So you but... sure it's Kurt Angle. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I because I think the second one has Randy Couture, who looks a lot like Kurt Angle. Randy Couture, uh, yeah, UFC yeah. fighter. Yep, yep, yep. That might be who it is. Yeah, bald and overly like yep. bulky. Um, learn your your sweaty burly men, Max. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> um, one has Lou Ferrigno in it. One has Billy Zane, your boy, Max. Uh, ah, Billy Zane. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and then the fourth, the Book of Souls doesn't even have any cover on it, so they probably couldn't even get anyone to brag about. <laughs> I guess Billy Zane had to do something when he wasn't starring in sniper films. Mm. Yeah, everyone's got to get somewhere. Yeah, he's in the third one, the Battle for Redemption. So yeah, the second one's Rise of a Warrior, and that's definitely like let's the prequel, know, prequel, prequel. Yeah, which. Um, <laughs> and then third one, Billy Zane, Ron Perlman, and does that one have Batista in it? Are they trying to make Batista the next rock? Because he's supposed to be starring in a movie soon where he's like a CIA agent and yeah. he's playing opposite like a young girl. Yeah, yeah, actually, Kayla and I just watched that that like three weeks ago. It's called My My Spy. Yeah, when Amazon Prime. Yep. Yeah. The problem with Batista is he's he's old. Like 
Yeah, he's, he's yeah. He started in WWE when he was in his like mid thirties. So like he doesn't he might not have much time to get those roles. Uh right. But you know, he's certainly he's had a few things here and there. Yeah, he's in the he's actually the top build person in the third one, even though he's not the he's not the Scorpion King. Um Right. And then let's see, fourth is Quest for Power. That's the one with Lou Frigno. And oh, it's got Rucker Hauer. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, let's see, any other notable? There's Lou Frigno. Huh. Yeah. So they, it's, I mean, that's like standard straight to ver- video, like fair there. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's it, it's such a weird franchise to think that there needs to be more of. Like, it just. Well, we'll we'll see where all this what all this unfolds into. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After, Before, uh, uh, after this year, I'm not putting any bets on anything. Yeah, that's probably wise. Uh, before we all sign off for the evening, I want to plug two quick things, uh, both tied to Mr. Kevin J. O'Connor, the guy who plays Benny that we were just talking about. Okay. Um, he, he plays the, what I, in my opinion, the best sidekick slash comic relief character in what is also the best Stephen Summers movie, which is, of course, Deep Rising. Uh, movie's right. fucking rules. <laughs> Um, but he's also uh, in the much more recent and also just excellent, excellent uh, heist movie, uh, Widows, directed by uh, Stephen McQueen. It's uh, if you haven't seen Widows, great movie. Watch Widows. Um, I've, I've I've heard of it and definitely remember, re- recall that title, but yeah, have not seen it either. Oh, Real it's good. a all star cast, and it is fucking incredible and uh mr kevin j o'connor is very very excellent in this very serious role that he has it's a minor one but he's really good he's a really good character i'll just say one yeah. time. <laughs> that's all i have to say How about that okay all right so i think that wraps up this episode of good brews bad views russ thank you for taking the time to come onto the podcast and talk about this eh, mediocre movie and uh yeah. about you know many other things and stuff like that we truly appreciate that your your uh dedication and support to what we're doing here yeah um, it helps to talk to another human being right now oh for sure <laughs> yeah besides, absolutely yeah. Be- besides yeah. my wife and my toddler <laughs> <laughs> for sure um and to our listeners thank you for tuning in and making it this far into this uh episode good Bruce bad views um if you have not check us out on all the standard social media pages facebook twitter instagram all that jazz we started a discord where we will be doing things online in the near future so if you're interested in that uh seek us out any one of us online and uh, we'll send you an invite to that because that's kind of how discord works we're available on all your favorite podcasting streaming services and applications of choice if you have not please leave us a rating and review Um, it helps people find us through the magic of the algorithm and all that jazz and such if you like what we're doing here at Good Brews, Bad Views, consider supporting our Patreon, where you can vote on future episodes, much like the Scorpion King, mm-hmm. where every month we have a poll where you can choose amongst from three episodes to uh, choose for us to watch and then you know record an episode on, as well as having our eternal thanks and getting ac- some access to some bonus content. So send us all your hate mail at goodbrewsbadviews at gmail.com. And we hope that you are rounding out your 2020 by staying safe, staying healthy, hoping all of you a better 2021. And as always, please watch and drink responsibly. (laughs) Good night. Thanks, Russ. Bye-bye.